G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm going to cover a quick tutorial to show you how to rename families using Dynamo. So I'm going to show you three methods today, these are the ones that I use quite regularly, because I do find that I am renaming families quite often in new projects or old projects, in order to make them comply to company naming standards, really common. Um, sorry, that's a wrong slide. Um, so we're using two custom nodes today. Uh, the first one is the all family types of category uh, from Clockwork, and the other one is the element set name node from Clockwork as well. And ideally, um, I'm doing this in version 2.0.3, but I believe any package with Clockwork available or any version of Dynamo with Clockwork available should be able to achieve this workflow. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So we're going to first look at method one, which is the option to add prefixes and suffixes to all families of a particular category. So um, I'm just going to jump into Dynamo. I'm just in the Autodesk sample project. Um, so let's just focus on specialty equipment in this particular example. So we're going to get the all family types of category node. And obviously the way that you collect your families uh, could be different to this. You could use something like data shapes in order to limit uh, the families that you interact with. Um, there's lots of options. But this is our collection method in this case. So I'm just going to get a categories dropdown. Um, it's better to use a dropdown in this case because probably Dynamo Player or uh, would be a good way to run this script um, rather than jumping in and changing the category manually. So in this case, I'm just going to go to specialty equipment and focus on this category. And this will give us all the family types, but not all the families. So what we can do with this is actually get the family of the family type. So we should end up with this one here, the parent family of the family type. So if I run this now, the clockwork node should give us our seven family types and then we should get our seven families from there. What if we have uh, more than one type in one of those families? So let's just say that we have two types in this dryer, for example. So I'll just add a toggle temporarily just to refresh my all family types of category node. And I'll just toggle just so that I can refresh my inputs. Okay, so now we have actually two, we should have two occurrences of the dry family. You can see that we can. So we actually want to get rid of this double up. What we'll do in this case is use a unique items. And this will only give us one occurrence of those families instead. So now you can see this eliminates that double up from the list. Um, so this allows you to filter out multiple types and just get the family because we just want to rename the family. Obviously you could rename family types as well if you wanted to work this way. Um, lots of options available. Anyway, we're going to proceed on with this list and we're going to get the family's name. So what, it, what it's currently called. So the name of this family. And we're going to assess this name and we're going to add the optional prefix and suffix. So what we'll do now is just use a code block for this bit. And I'm just going to say prefix as a variable plus name as the family name plus suffix as a variable. Uh, in this case, I believe I might need to just double check my check my formula. Hmm, interesting. I might just try using uh, some different names for my variables. Yeah, it seems like prefix and suffix must be reserved in the code. Um, so instead I'll just use pref and suff. So we're going to take our name and then we're going to take two strings. And these essentially are our prefix and our suffix. So you can leave these blank if you don't want to add a prefix and a suffix. Let's just say we want to add um, Aussie Bim Guru 123 underscore as our project number. Because typically this is what I tend to put at the front of families, the project that it belongs to, or the library acronym that it came from. Uh, but typically in a lot of projects we like to replace this so that all the families become like a project specific version of the family, in case a user wants to edit them. And sometimes we like to put the version of the family as well. So let's add a suffix of underscore R19 for Revit 2019. So what we should get now is a list of those modified family names with a prefix and a suffix included. And all we have to do now is run them through a element set name from Clockwork. And that's literally how simple it is. Um, so just look for the cog for Clockwork. So set uh, element set name. And what you want to do is take your original unique items list and connect the name with the prefix and the suffix. Cool. So I'll just save that and I'll run. 
and it should take just a little bit of time depending how many families. Uh, but you can see there now I have a prefix and a suffix on my families. So it's super convenient. Um, so that's the first method. The second method is instead to replace our prefix. So this is quite common uh, when you might have a, a common library with your company acronym on the front. But when it goes to a project, you actually want your families to be replaced with a project specific prefix so that when a user edits that family, they don't save over the library's version if you don't have a library on lockdown. So this is quite common in small companies. And I actually have a script I run that literally does this to every single family in the entire project that has our company prefix to avoid people overriding because we do work in a high trust environment in my current company. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue with my script as I had it before. But instead, I'm going to go and work with my uh, with my uh, prefix method and change that. So I'm going to ignore this whole method I had before. And what I'm going to do instead is first I'm going to filter. So I'm going to check if my families have a specific prefix already. So let's just say that a few of my families don't have this prefix. So I'm just going to remove this abg123 from a few of these families. Because we only want to replace the prefix where it occurs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our unique items and we're still going to take their family name and I'll just freeze this set name node. But what we're going to do is go and check if the string begins with to see if it begins with our nominated prefix. So in this case, we're going to search for our prefix or our, our current prefix. And in this case, we'll just say we're looking for abg123 underscore. Make sure to include separators in your prefix when you work with them, ideally, unless you want to maintain that separator in the new prefix. So we're going to search for that. And in this case, you could or couldn't ignore case. Typically, I'd say you probably don't want to ignore case. It just depends on what your prefix is and how many versions exist of it, if it's got upper and lower case. Typically, I'd expect you wouldn't need to worry about that, though. What we're also going to do is we're also going to count uh, the number of characters in our string just for later. So we're going to take our existing prefix and we're going to count that we have seven characters in our prefix to replace and we'll get a list of our families. In this case, it looks like my script maybe hasn't updated. Okay, so what I might do is just reopen my script. Typically, you'd be running this from Dynamo Player so it would refresh every time. Let's rerun that so that my family names update. There we go. And now we should get a list of trues and falses. So what we're gonna do is get a filter by Boolean mask. And I'm gonna filter those families by whether they contain the prefix or not. This way we minimize the amount of elements we're changing because the element set name node takes a little bit of time. So you don't ideally wanna rename something to, a, to the same name it already is because it's just a waste of time. But what we're gonna do with these now is we're going to you could replace or you could remove. Um, in this case, I'm going to do a different method. So I'm going to remove the prefix first. So I'm going to remove characters. So from the family name, which we'll go and grab here. So we'll go and get the family name of the families that do contain the prefix. And what we'll do is we'll start at the beginning at index zero. So the first character, and we're going to count by the length of the prefix we're replacing. This way, if the prefix changes, you can reposition where this goes up until. And what we should get now is we should get everything without our prefix. And as you can probably guess, it's just a simple matter of adding the prefix. So uh, in this case, you can just use a simple plus node. And to the front of this, we'll add our new prefix as a string. So in this case, let's just say we want to call this abg456. There we go. So we can call that new prefix. That, that way in Dynamo Play, you can see the existing and the new prefix. And from there, we should end up with a list of modified names to replace. So what we can do is just move, move these down out of the way. And to these elements in our in list from our Boolean mask, we can set them to these names. So I'll just unfreeze save and we should be able to just run this and this should replace the prefix that it finds a match for and there you go you can see abg123 is now abg456 
Um, we're going to look at one more example now, which is a more complicated method, which is to replace all occurrences of a character or a phrase or a string. Uh, this is really common if you need to change all your underscores to dashes or your dashes to underscores, for example, because sometimes you might work on a project with a client who has specific data requirements about how their data needs to be separated. This can be a really handy method to quickly come in and change over the data standards. Because assuming your company probably typically has a standard for what separators they use, uh, but this is a handy way of doing it when you're not just looking for the prefix of a family name. So what we'll do is just jump back into uh, Dynamo script, and we're just going to make one more modification to it. So in this case, we're going to use a different node to check whether the name contains the thing we're looking for, because in, we're not just looking for starting with. So what we're going to do is use string contains instead. So we're going to search for uh, this particular phrase that we want to replace. So in this case, we'll call this, this one replace this. And this is the thing to be replaced. In this case, let's just say we're replacing underscore. And we're going to check if this family name contains underscore, ignoring case. We're going to filter our Boolean mask based on this. I'm just going to go freeze my final, final output. At this point, we should be filtering out all families. I might just refresh as, as well, just so it picks up the new family names. So we should filter out anything that doesn't contain the character we're going to replace. In this case, actually, everything contains it. So let's just really quickly make one that won't contain it. Let's just call vars r19 just vars with no underscores. Let's just rerun that. I might just refresh the script again. And now we should be looking at everything except for the vars because there's nothing to replace. So again, it saves time. It's less to think about. We actually don't need our string length anymore. But we're going to get our family name and we're going to be using a different node in this case. We're going to be using the string replace node. So actually, it's not, it's not too tricky, actually, this method. And instead of removing a string, we're just going to be replacing. So we're going to be searching for our element back here, our underscore. And we're going to be replacing it with a dash in this case, which is quite a common substitution. There we go. And this should just give us a list of updated names. There you go. You can see all the underscores are dashes. And I'll just connect this up. What I might do is just minimize Dynamo so you can actually see the change happening and how quick it can be. So I'll unfreeze my set name node. And I'll run and just keep an eye on these underscores. There we go. And bang, done. So very quick, very easy. And I find that these are really powerful scripts. I use them a lot. And obviously, it doesn't just have to be family names. It can be type names. It can be parameter values. It's really a, a find and replace method, ultimately. It just depends on how you want to use find and replace prefix, uh, all occurrences, or adding prefixes and suffixes. So I hope that helps you sort of gain a bit more control over the control of the naming of the elements in your model or the families in your model. Um, but that's all for today. So just a quick one, but one that I think is really powerful and good to know. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any feedback or comments, uh, feel free to leave it down below. I usually make videos about twice a week. Um, so feel free to follow and subscribe if you're not already doing so. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.